Hello, and welcome back to Advancing Spark. And it's very late at night. So I'm just about to get a flight and I'm going to be away for a week or two. So I thought I'd make some sneaky little video to tide you guys over while I'm away. So a couple of quick little tidbits. This time we've had a few people saying, can you just explain secrets properly and how you create the scopes and how it actually all properly works. So secrets in a nutshell in Databricks, let's do it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video and otherwise, yeah, let us know how you get on. So here I have Databricks all set up. I've got a cluster running and I want to run a secret. I want to say actually in my secret, or actually you know, spelling it properly, is going to be from dbutils.secrets.get. So that is my little secret getting one. So Databricks utilities.secrets.get will get anything that I have in a certain scope and it'll get the key back that I give it a name for. So if I wanted to have a scope called my secret bucket and my name was secret squirrel, I could go and bring that secret squirrel variable back as my secret. So how do I do that? So first things first, I need to set the CLI up. So I've got my Windows terminal and I've, got, I've installed the CLI. So you need Python 3.7, you need to do pip install Databricks CLI and it'll install it for you. And then you can do this. So how do I get that to work? Do Databricks, configure, and I need a token. A little bit. So I'm going to sell it. I want to connect in token mode. I, you can do things like set of profiles and all that kind of stuff. But I need to tell it how to connect. And I've got this up here. I've got my URL. I'm taking my, my URL so I can connect to it. Saying so that's what I'm trying to connect to. That's my workspace. Actually, it's my region. And I'm giving it a, a workspace token. So I need to go to my user, user settings. I can see here, this is my, when I generate token. So I'm going to say, I would like a new token again for the CLI. When I last did that demo. And I did one for a day. Because I'm not putting a token out on the internet. I know you people. Um, then we generate, and that gives me that token. And that's the only time I can see that token. As soon as I hit, okay, that's gone. Can't use it again. So I've got my token copied, hopefully. I can come in here and say, that's my token. Connect. So that is now save some local user information. So if I try and do anything inside the Databricks CLI, it's going to know it's talking to me. So my little test, I've got a few different clusters. One of them's turned on, high concurrency standard. If I do a quick you know, Databricks got clusters list, I should be able to see those three clusters. There we go. I'm pointing at the right one. I'm not on the client's uh, site. So that's good. So I've got my runtime servant is up and running. I can do something with that. So I want to do secrets. So let's go secrets. I can see various things I can do in here. Do lots. And I want to say, you know what? I want to do a new scope. Kind of makes sense. I can do create scope. And I call one of my secret buckets. Oh, I call sensitive D Python. There we go. So I've created a new secret scope, and that's not empty, just an empty container ready for me to put secrets into. So I've then got the list. Uh, so I can do list scopes. And that'll just tell me I should now see I've got a secret bucket. That's now something I can do. Or I can go in here and say list inside a given scope, and that's going to be my secret bucket. Nothing in there. So I've got an empty scope ready for me to work with. So I can now put something in there. So I can say, well, let's do puts, or you can use right uh, into the scope called secret buckets. Type in. Uh, I then need to choose what it's called. So it's going to be key, technical, what do you call it? Secret square. And then my string value is going to be one, two, three, four, five. So super easy. So that's going to enter that scope, go and add a new secret, and my secret value, one, two, three, four, five, I won't be able to see. So I can go and list inside that scope. I should now see. There we go. I've now got a secret inside my secret bucket scope. There's now this thing called secret squirrel. And that's, that's the way I generally work with it. So if you're doing Databricks backed scopes, and that's when all of your secrets are sitting inside Databricks itself, inside that DBFS, the file system, then that is how you set that up. So if we go back over here and I can step into, there we go, my workspace. I should be able to say what my scope is, secret bucket, secret name, 
Here's my secret. Squirrel. Okay. So now I've got my secret should be available. Again, if that worked, I didn't get an error, meaning I've successfully brought something back. And then my secret, we can go and say, what's the value of that? And it'll say no, it's redacted, because that's a secret. Um, which is the one of the weirdest security things in that you can still go, what's the first value, second value? You know, it's it's not a um, it's not a real security feature. It's a stop someone looking over your shoulder kind of feature, not a you're not allowed to know this value kind of feature. So don't see secrets like it's meant to be. You know, you can do for uh, for each loop. Get our I. And that's my secret. You know, it's it's not to stop you getting hold of your secret. It's to stop you accidentally showing people your secret. But that's how you do the main part. Now the hidden wizardry is for the other type of uh, secret scope. So we've got different backends. We've got a few which are Databricks and a few which are Azure Key Vault. Now Azure Key Vault is the general Azure credential. So there's loads of things you can do with that. Um, and so if you're doing things, you're sharing things with lots of different um, Things like data factory. You've got lots of different bits of Azure that need to share a password and you're doing like regular password cycling and functions need to go and get it. And key vault backed is a much smarter thing than just doing Databricks backed. So I don't want to have to go and change my password in 10 different places. I'm going to do it once in a key vault. It kind of makes sense. To get to that is a bit of a trick. So I've got the URL up here. That's my full URL that I'm looking at. And then at the end of it, I need to do secrets. Secrets and then create a scope, specifically with lowercase c and capital S. And I know that feels ridiculous, but yes, that is the secret URL that you need to go to if you want to create a key vault backed secret or a scope. See, I hit okay, and I'm now at this create secret scope, and there's no button. There's no, there's no way you can get to this page unless you know that URL, which is just all sorts of weird, like security through obscurity, which is not real security, um, but still. If you want to go and create a key vault by secret, you need to know that you go to your homepage, slash secrets, slash create scope, lowercase c capital S, and you can get to this page. And then we can create a key vault back secret. So we need a key vault. So let's go and grab a key vault that I've got in here. Yep. So we grab one of those. And then inside our access policies, actually inside our properties, we've got this DNS name and a resource ID. That's what it's asking for. It's saying, how do I get to that? What is that string? I would put those into those two things, DNS name and resource ID. Who should be able to use it? Is it just me that can change this? Or for anyone can change the settings? I want to call it my KV fact. If I put those four things in and I've got proper access to the key vault, I hit OK, that creates that scope. And then next time I go and have a look here, I would see KV backed with all my details. So they're the two different ways you can do it. So Databricks backed, you create them, you maintain them, and you do everything inside the CLI. You can't really get to it aside from in the CLI and the API. There's no thing inside the Databricks workspace to go and create and manage secrets and do all that kind of stuff. It's a, it's a CLI job. So that's a bit weird, but again, if you get used to it, when you use them, super, super useful. I like using them for um, doing environments. So if I've got the same Databricks notebook deployed to four different environments, and I'm telling it which database to connect to, I don't want to have to change my code and say connect to the dev database, the test database, and different ones. Now the server name is not a secret. It's not a, an encrypted string I'm not allowed to share. But you can still use Databricks back secrets when you deploy different environments. You can use it as an environmental settings as well as a place to store credentials. Secrets are crazy useful. So definitely advise if you're not using secrets currently, there are two ways. Pick whether it should be Databricks backed or Key Vault backed, depending on does it need to be shared with a lot of the places in Azure. Otherwise, yeah, try them out. Let me know how you get on. See you next time.